because our car was marked, you know, so it's clear that we were journalists, also from behind where he was coming from. Uh, so, I mean, we did not have any chance to, to do more than that. We didn't have any chance to shout out that we were reporters or anything like that. A car, we were parked somewhere ready to take a, a right turn when a car just out of the blue came from behind. A guy, a guy stepped out and started shooting immediately into the car. There was no trying to come in contact with us. He was not trying to communicate with us. He was not trying to make us stop because he wanted to see ID or whatever. I mean, whatever he would, might have been interested in. He wasn't doing anything like that. He immediately shot when he came out of the car. Uh, so, I mean, and he was on maybe 10, 10, 15 meters behind us. And he was clearly, I mean, I was clearly marked that we were journalists also from the back. So, I mean, there's no doubt that we were targeted as journalists in my mind. And that's also what we have seen with other examples that you, that you brought up. The Sky News team, for example, there was also a Swiss journalist who was targeted. And now uh, what we he heard about yesterday, where unfortunately one journalist uh, lost his life. I mean, it it's clear that, that the journalists are being targeted. And I start to wonder whether marking your car as press is really actually going to make any difference when you are in certain areas close to the front line. Or maybe that just means that you're going to be targeted, where they're actually more risky than not having yeah. it. I think but that's Stephen, some of the questions Stephen, that journalists the, have to ask themselves the, now. The fact that you question that, do you actually question why you do your job and if you should continue doing your job in a war zone? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I'm still in the process of recovering. Uh, of getting, you know, uh, mentally and also physically uh, better. I mean, it's going very well, but it's still a process I'm in. So I'm not focused so much on the question that comes after what next. But it's not, I don't think that it, it, it's, hmm, it changes the fact that uh, the job is important and somebody has to do it. I just think it questions the way that you work now. Uh, if you are not safe as reporting as journalists. I mean, you can always have an accident. Air, air attacks can happen and you can be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Those risks are always there. But if you're deliberately targeted while driving around in your car or walking around doing interviews, which I mean, with your, with your vest and, and the press symbol on, you have to make a new risk assessment because that's a that's much, much more dangerous scenario than, than what normal is normally is the case uh, for me, for example, when covering uh, the war in, in, in Donbass, uh, which I've done for, for three years now, when I've been to other conflicts and wars, such as in nagorno karabakh in, um, between Armenia and Azerbaijan uh, back in 2020. You know, so you have to take that into consideration and, and see, can you actually do this now or not? 